Good afternoon, good afternoon, Black and Married with Kids. I am so excited to be with you guys tonight again on an amazing, amazing Monday for February. Um, so I'm excited to be with you guys tonight to really dive into this topic. But before I get started, I always love to introduce myself. I may look a little different tonight because I don't have my long hair. I'm rocking my natural today. Um, but as always, every Monday, I'm Arielle Fuller here with you guys on Black and Married with Kids. I want to thank Lamar and Ronnie for having me on this platform tonight to speak to you guys on amazing topics that I always cover, sometimes challenging topics that I cover um, with Dunamis Woman Enterprise, where my mother and I guide women of faith on how to heal within their soul and transform their life relationships and ignite their power through prayer as we give them kingdom teaching and life coaching. Hi Linda, how are you? As you guys are chiming in, please tell me your city and state and where you're from. You guys know every Monday we engage heavily on here. I look at you all's comments. I want to know who I'm talking to and thank you guys for being on here. Like I said, I look a little different because I have different hair, but um, it's my real hair. So I'm excited um, to be here with you guys and share this message because tonight I'm going to give you some insight on how to let go the man you love so he can grow. So how to let a man go so he can grow, okay? And this is so important because oftentimes as women, we get so afraid to let men go in our lives. And I'm going to give you guys some myths on how to do this. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Thank you for chiming in. Hi from Philadelphia, Laverne. Nice to see you guys. So I cannot wait to get in this topic today because I really do think it's going to help so many women who've been kind of in this vacillation of, should I necessarily let go of this man that I love or I know that I need to let him go, but I'm trying to hold on to some things. And if this isn't you and you just want to dive in for a great conversation, guess what? I want you to share this right now on your timeline because I guarantee you that there is some woman who wants to learn and grow from this insight right now that I'm about to share with you guys. So make sure you share this on your page. Make sure you let another woman know who needs this topic. But if this is not you that needs it, hey, stay here and engage on the comments, right? Because we have an amazing time. So tonight, how to let go a man that you love so he can grow. Here's the thing. Before I give you guys these three things that I'm going to share with you guys, first off, I'm going to give you a little background. Because every time I come here, I'm back in here with kids. They're like, Ariel, you married? You got kids? You single? Let's just break this all down, all right? I am single. I have never been married. I do not have any children. However, there have been many men that have came in my life that I have learned to love after we have built great, strong friendships that I had to necessarily let go so that they can grow and be the man that they necessarily wanted to be. Did that always feel good for me? Absolutely not. Being 29 and never have been married, oftentimes we want love and we want to receive love from the man that we have given our heart to, the man that we grown close to the man that we can communicate with but in my young years of living okay I have learned the skill and the art of knowing that it is okay to let a man go so he can grow I that is key I'm not saying let a man go because you want him out your face I'm not saying let a man go because you know he done mess with somebody else no letting him go so he can grow now I know that there's married women on here I know there may be single women on here there may be women in relationship and let me put a this disclaimer before I give you guys these tips. Letting a man go so he can grow does not always mean that you have to walk away from the relationship. Now, if that is what you feel like you need to do in this season, then by all means do what you necessarily need to do. But the things that I give you all tonight, please know that you can let a man go um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually so that he can grow. Not physically, but you can let him go in these areas of your life, okay? So if you're ready, come below. I'm ready, Ari. I want to hear the tips you're about to give. Make sure you share this. If you haven't come below your city and state, do so right now. But I just start seeing some I'm ready, all right? I'm not giving y'all nothing, Tassie. I'm ready. So come below. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready because I'm so ready to share this with you guys um, and give you the insight that I always give millennials, that I always give other people. Hi, Alexis. I see that you said you're ready. All right, Tasha, you're ready. All right, I see these comments coming in. You're ready, all right? So here's the thing. You need to be mature with the advice that I'm going to give you, but it's so important. Hi, Jackie from Maryland. Oh, I got something good for you if you're in Maryland next week. Stay on this all the way to the end. Hi, Shanika from New York. Um, so the first thing is, as a woman, okay, letting go of the man that you love so he can grow, first thing that you need to do is, one, you need to remove ownership. 
What do I mean by removing ownership? Comment below ownership, okay? You have to remove ownership. Oftentimes as women, we like to take on this ownership as if the man that was sent in our life, keyword sent in our life, belongs to us. And we create this dominance, this ownership to say, that's my man, that's my husband, that's, you know, the man that's in my life. And key, he probably is your husband. Key, he probably is the man that committed himself to you. Key thing is, he probably is in a relationship with you. But one thing that you have to do as a woman is you mentally have to remove ownership and this mentality of ownership because a man does not belong to you. That is the first thing. If you keep this ownership mentality, then it's going to be hard for you to let a man go so he can grow because you think that you own him. You think that he belongs to you. You think that he is necessarily in need of you. And here's the thing. He doesn't. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't mean that a husband is not clinging and, and, and connected to his wife. But oftentimes, and I've seen this even as moms, see, mothers, you all birth your children. So no matter what, your children have come from you. They, they can't go anywhere else. You are their mother. But you didn't birth your husband or the man in your life naturally. So he didn't come through you, and he doesn't belong to you. He be I saw someone comment below. He belongs to God. That's absolutely right. He belongs to God. So in order to let a man go, first you need to know that he does not belong to me. He does not belong to me more than he belongs to the one who actually sent him and positioned him in my life. And as long as you keep that mentality of knowing that you do not own him, then you allow him to go where he needs to go so he can grow. And I say allow very intentionally because oftentimes as women, we like to say, well, you can't go here. You can't go there. Mentally, you Open yourself up to say, you know what, wherever it is that it's needed for you as a man, whatever it's needed for you in this season, I am open to receiving it. I'm open to the opportunity because I don't own you. I don't make the calls. I don't make the shots. I can't dictate where you go when you don't go. You got to take away this control. And oftentimes as women, this is how we grow up. First off, forget about even being married. We grow up to go get a good job. This is why there's so much competition between women. We grow up to get a good job, to be successful, to have our career. And the last thing we need to do is get the man. And this is why so many people get competitive and so many women because you get a man sometimes and you're like, uh-uh, he ain't going nowhere else. He belongs to me. He not going to be with no other woman. And that's why so many women, especially my, gender, my millennial women, are very competitive because they got successful. Then they got the nice house. Then they got the car. And the last thing they need to make the ice on the cake is the man. And if anyone comes in between to take that man away from them, oh, I tr promise you, they all heck break loose. So... This is that ownership mentality that you grow up and people have instilled, get the man. That's the prize. Get him and you don't, don't let nobody else take that away from you. So I'm not going to say that this mentality is just because of who we are. We have, this has been ingrained in us. But what you have to do is you have to release this ownership mentality that he does not belong to you. He belongs to God, as someone said, which is very key for my next point. So I saw people comment below ownership, right? That's the first thing. Remove ownership. The second thing after you do that is as a woman, this is going to be hard, okay? But when you understand that a man does not belong to you, that he belongs to God, God is his father, that is the one that he's going to hear from, that means that man was not created to hear from woman. Who was he created to hear from? I want y'all to comment this down below if you know this. Man was not made to hear from woman. Who was he created to hear from? from when you're for my moms when you're while well, I wait for these comments my moms when your baby was in your womb they heard whose voice your voice right they heard what you were saying they heard mama they heard daddy but see guess what your man wasn't in your belly so before he was even in his mom's belly who was he actually hearing from uh, we're going to get into some addictions because this ties into this, Sade, so please stay with me, right? Noah has come below, but a man hears from God. Ah, Mary! Yes! You 
you got it right, Mary. You're the first one. A man hears from God. He doesn't hear from a woman. So guess what? When you know that you got to let a man go in this season, and I'm not talking about physically. It may even be in your home. When you got to let a man go that you love so he can grow, you as a woman, one, have to remove ownership, but two, you have to close your mouth so his ears can now be open. Because if you're so busy, na da 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 telling him how he needs to grow, he can't clearly hear from where he needs to, who he needs to hear from. And here's the thing. Sometimes he has to get into some mess to clearly hear what God wants him to hear. You can't save him. And that's why it's taking away this ownership. Sometimes some men got to go out and step out and, 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 and cheat. Not that it's right or, or mess around with the wrong woman because they need to learn some lessons. Sometimes they need to have you walk away so that they can realize the, the value that they truly had in a woman. And not someone else that was trying to manipulate them. So guess what? God will use every situation in this man's life so that he can hear from him and not from you. And oftentimes as women, we know where a man wants to grow. We see the potential of his growth. But we're so busy talking and saying and telling him exactly what we want that he can't even hear from who created him. And this is so key. In order for him to grow, he has to hear from who created him. So I want you all to come below. We got ownership, but I want you to say open. I need you to be open. Because here's the thing. When you close your mouth, he will not only open his ears, but here's what happens. When you close your mouth as a woman, guess what opens for you? Your heart. See, you got to keep your heart pure. You got to keep, keep your heart open. The things that you speak now go into your heart and that's what you believe. So if you're saying to him all the time, oh, you need to do this. You need to get better in this. Your heart becomes cold. Your heart becomes bitter. Your heart becomes angry. Your heart starts looking at him as someone differently than what you have called, what he is called to be. You, you start looking at him like a different man because one, at one point you was attracted to him. But when you start seeing the fact that he necessarily needs to grow, I'm going to tell you, Jennifer, how to fight for what you love. But fighting for what you love is not always saying everything you need to say to a man. So then we're about to get to how to fight for what you love. And, I'm, and I remember the comment of addictions, right? So here's the thing. You got to open your heart. And when you open your heart, Jennifer, this is how you start to fight for what you love. Because now your heart stays open and it's not hard. So God hears also your heart's cry. See, God, a man can hear from God, but God still hears your heart's cry. So when you fight for what you love, you're now putting your fight and it's going through your heart. You're now allowing your heart to say, God, I need you to help him grow in this season. I'm shutting up my mouth so that he can hear from you. I'm shutting up my mouth so he doesn't hear all that I need to say, but he can hear exactly what you need to say. And God, you hear my heart. You hear my cry. You hear exactly how I want him to grow. You hear how I want him to become a man that he can be all what he can be. You hear how I want him to be a father that's going to serve his children. You hear how I want success for him so he could provide for us. You hear everything that's in my my heart and you allow your heart to be poured out and to be pure but when you have allowed your mouth to talk so much when you talk about things that you want to see your heart becomes hardened and now God can't even mesh with you in your heart because as women we have pure hearts y'all we have good pure hearts especially for I don't know about y'all but I know for me and my mom and I do them so many enterprise we have a heart for men because I want to see men prosper in every area of their life because I know when they have order, everything else would have order. And that's what we do at Doing Some Enterprise. We guide women of faith on how to heal, how to soften their hearts so they can transform their life and relationships. And this is why I'm so happy that Lamar and Ronnie has me on here tonight to talk to you guys about this. So I thank them for that because it's so important that we learn this. Yes, uh, Rashawn, this is good. You had to learn this. And yes, it works. Being consistent. Ah! Great comment. Consistent is the test. I didn't say you have to close your mouth for one day. Consistently, you all, this growth process for all of us, not just men, this growth process requires consistency because it doesn't happen overnight. So in the area that you want him to grow, as you're learning to be silent, when I say silent, let me put a disclaimer. I'm not saying don't say anything. When I'm saying be silent, I'm saying now you're being strategic in the things that you need to say. And this is why coaching is so important and guidance is so important, which is what we do with doing some enterprise because oftentimes it's not what we say, it's how we say it and when we say it and knowing the right things to say in the right timing. Because as God is doing something in him for him to grow, we as women have to be aligned with God. And there's a way that you can be truly aligned so that you can say certain things. 
okay and so this is so important yes and it's guess what Sh Shaquilla it doesn't happen overnight we all gotta learn this and that's why we teach the how-to because it isn't easy it's easier said than done trust me I have let go many of men that have been great friends and it's easier said than done please don't make this think that this is easy I have cried many of nights. I have said many of stupid things. I have sent many a crazy text. I have snapped off many a times learning how to do this. I have gotten frustrated. I have gotten lack of patience. I have gotten irritated. I have gotten, you know, Ugh! I just want it to happen. And I had to learn that it doesn't happen overnight. Hi, Lorena, we just was in California. Um, but yes, it's so key that you learn how to implement this so that he can grow, okay? Because if you want him to grow, there's certain things that we as women, we have to do. And I, I, I would love to say that men got a lot of work to do, but yeah, guess what, women? We got a lot of work to do as well. Um, yes, we definitely need to be careful of how we speak to our men. Okay, so I gave you all the two points. First thing is remove ownership, all right? If you're just now catching up with me, if you haven't shared this yet, please share this right now just to let you guys know. First thing was remove ownership. The second thing is you got to open up your his ears. He His ears have to be open to hear from God and you have to open up your heart. So you have to close your mouth so that his ears can be open to hear from who he needs to hear from. And then you as a woman have to open up your heart. Do not allow your heart to get hardened. Do not allow your heart to get frustrated. Do not allow your heart to get irritated because it has to stay pure in your heart and who he is. Because guess what? Key thing, God sent him in your life. And God would not have sent you in your life if he didn't know that you were the woman that was assigned to carry him through this. Can you be mature enough? Can God trust you enough to actually keep your heart open and pure for this man? Can God trust you enough to be able to let him go and bring him back to who he needs to be so that he can grow? Can he trust you enough? Because he sent you and he sent him in your life. He could have sent him to any other woman, but he sent him to you. Don't get puffed up to think that you just because you're beautiful and you cute and because you wear nice stuff and you pretty, that that's why God sent him to you. No. He said, I, can I trust you? Can I trust that you can regard this man the way that I want you to regard him? That you can send him back to me because you want him to grow. Can I trust you? See, oftentimes we as women get puffed up because we think that we got man because of our physical. But if you are a believer, which I'm hoping some of you all on here are, can God trust you? Can he trust that you can endure this process? Can he trust that you can stay consistent? Can he trust that your heart can stay pure to him? Can he trust that you don't get bitter and start calling him out of his name and calling him stupid and saying he's a dumb and that he don't know anything and that his vision is horrible? Can he trust you? See, we oftentimes put so many pressure on men, but can he trust you? In the silent things and the silent words that you say and the thoughts that you have for this man. I think someone said that. We need to be careful how we speak to men. Can he trust you? Write that, comment that below. Can he trust me? Because it's so key. I didn't mean to go on that tangent, but it's so key, all right? And I had to learn in letting men go that it wasn't because I was just hurting, but God was trusting me with these souls. God was trusting me with these men that he was putting in my life. He knew that no other woman was probably going to pray for them, but I had to pray for them. He trusted me. The tender 28-year-old girl, the 27-year-old girl, the 29-year-old girl, he trusted me. That I wouldn't call them out their name. That I would still be friends with them because I knew that God had to love them more than I could ever love them. He trusted me. And I couldn't get caught up in the fact that, oh, I want to be married or that I want to be loved. No, he trusted me. I don't know how much I can stress that. I don't have to be married to know this. And I had to see these men grow. I had to see these men go choose other people to be their wife. But guess what? I knew the work that I put in is because he trusted me. I didn't create ill will towards them. So that's so key. I didn't mean to go on that tangent, y'all, but y'all know how passionate I get on Black and Married with Kids, okay? So, the, this, the, so here's the third thing. What you have to do in order to let the man go so he can grow is that you have to be optimistic, okay? I said ownership. Then we talked about being open. But three, you have to be optimistic. And what does this mean about being optimistic? This means that you have to, that potential, that, that thing, you see in him the thing that you, the man that you want him to grow into and to become because he has to go through his maturation process as well see here's the thing you got to be optimistic you got to see not what you want to see as a woman but you got to see what God sees in him you got to stay optimistic thank you Tasha optimistic in the future that is set for him optimistic and that he will be a great father to your children optimistic that even if he did mess up at some point and committed adultery and infidelity that he can be faithful to you 
Optimistic that even if he does choose somebody else that he will love that woman far greater than he loves you because you want him to be the man that you want him to be. You got to be optimistic. Optimistic about that addiction that he will break the addiction because it's a stronghold that's over his mind. You got to stay optimistic because guess what? Men get tired too. Men give up hope too. And so you got to keep the vision. Yes, Tasha, keep the vision. Not the potential, not the things that you want, but keep the vision. The vision and the order that God wants to see for every man in your your life whether it's your husband whether it's your brother whether it's your son whether it's your cousin the vision that is set in this world don't get so caught up and that's why I said remove ownership don't get so caught up and how you want them to be start looking at optimistic view of how God wants this as, us to be how he wants all of us to be and when you know in your heart that you have to let go of the man that you love so he can grow that you got to let him go so you can grow then you got to keep this mentality even if he's still in your space even if he's in your home and you stay faithful but like we said earlier it's easier said than done and this is why it's so important for you all to be coached on how to implement some of these things and so if you live I have a good gift for everyone who stayed with me on the end okay for all of you all, but if you live in these states, if you live near Arlington, Virginia, if you live near Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois, I want you to actually come out to my mom's healing and our healing for the soul tour. It's very, very little. Women have tra transformed their lives to be at this healing for my soul tour. And I want go you to go to this link, bit.ly backslash healing tour 2019. And I want you to get registered. It's only $27. And I want you to get registered. And I want you to come out to this healing for the soul tour because this is what women are learning how to do, how to implement some of these things, how to heal from all the hurt that they have had, how to even learn how to let go of the man they, they love so they can grow. And I want you to treat yourself to come out to this tour and meet us in person, okay? and be there so that you can get these strategies but if you don't live in any of these states guess what i'm not leaving you out there all right so can someone post a link for me lakeisha said that but i'm 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 live with you all now so i need someone to post a link the first one is bit.ly backslash healing tour 2019 bit.ly backslash healing tour 2019 and i'm going to come down and comment with you guys and drop it down below but that's for the tour okay if you live in any of those cities and states that i just said houston texas dallas texas arlington virginia uh, chicago illinois atlanta georgia okay i want you to come out to the tour but if you don't live in any of these states, I want you to actually get what you need. No, no, we're in Tennessee, but we may come your way. Yes, that's it, Matilda. Thank you so very much. Yes, that's it. Thank you so very much for writing that down. But if you don't live in any of these states, I want you to get our healing challenges. We have three healing challenges that are going to walk you through some of these things of how to position yourself as a woman to implement what I'm saying. So I want you to go to this if you don't live in these states. Go to bit.ly my healing course. See, it's pretty easy. bit.ly backslash my healing course. And you're going to get all the teachings of how to implement some of these things as a woman so that you can learn how to pray, so that you can clean up some of this residue, so that you can learn what it's like to, you know, how to pray for someone that's dealing with addiction or infidelity. I want you to go there and I want you to get access to this course. Treat yourself to one of these courses because it's so important that you walk yourself as a woman. I did not learn how to do this if it wasn't for me to pursue healing. This is why healing is so important. And healing, like I tell people all the time, yes, that's right, Matilda. Healing is not for the hurt. Healing is for the humble women. It's for the women that are humble enough to say that they want to grow, that they want to learn, that they want to position themselves for the men in their lives so they can be the great man that they need to be, so that they can be the great woman that they need to be, so they can be the great mother that they need to be. Healing is for the humble. It's not just for the hurt. It's for the ones that want to grow. And this is why it's so important. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, um, everyone, for writing that down below. Yes, if you don't live in any of these states, go to the those links, bit.ly backslash my healing course. And I want you to go get access to the healing challenges. It's three that you could choose from. But if you live in these states, y'all better look at me. You see me? If you live in any of the cities that I just said, you need to come out to the Healing For My Soul tour, okay? Doesn't mean we're not going to come to you all cities, but we have already went to Los Angeles. We just left Hampton, Virginia this past weekend. And next weekend, we're going to be in Arlington, Virginia. Then we're going to Chicago, then Houston, then Dallas, then Atlanta, where we're ending. So we cannot wait to be there and to hug you all and to love on you all so very much as you implement this and know that God has the man that he has, that he sent to your life, that he protects him, that he guides him, that he wants to download everything 
everything that he needs to download in him and you are only going to be that helper that's going to help bring his soul back to where he needs to be so he can grow right so i love you guys so very much i thank you for being on here with me please share this as always, I thank Lamar and Ronnie for entrusting me to be on here and deliver this message. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, comment below. I enjoyed it. Ohio. No, we're not coming to Ohio, but you can come to Chicago. Matilda's coming from Ohio to Chicago. Y'all need to do like a road trip, but I think we're going to have to come to Ohio because all you all say that you're in Ohio. Um, but yes, Memphis, South Carolina, North Carolina, we definitely want to come to you all states. All right. So if you enjoyed it, come below. I enjoyed it. And I want you to share this. If you feel like another woman needs to hear this message, please, please, please share this on your page, but go there, go to those links, make sure that you um, sign up and you go get access to this. So yes, I enjoyed you guys as well. Tomorrow you will hear my mom on here as she comes to you guys with another topic on dealing with infidelity and cheating. Hmm, that should be really good. All right. So, um, she will see you guys as well, but thank you all. I have to get off of here because someone else has to come on, but I love you all. God bless you guys and have an amazing night. And tonight, just do me, do me a favor. Even if you don't know exactly what to say, you don't know how to do so. I want you to say a, a prayer. Allow yourself to open up your heart for the man that is just pressing on your heart right now. And when you go to bed tonight, I really want you to just say what it is that you, that you desire for his heart. That you desire for his growth. Allow your heart to just speak openly about him to God. Even if you don't know the words to say, tap into your heart. Take that moment of silence and really critically think about how you see this man and where you want him to grow in the areas you want him to grow. And when you take that moment of reflection, I want you to do something. I want you to start opening up your mouth. And I want you to just say that to God. I want you to pray for him. I want you to ask God to just start doing some of those things in him. Start sending those people in his life that need to speak to him. Start removing you in the areas that you need to be removed so that he can work in his life. Just do that. Just solemnly take that time and pray for him. And allow your heart to be opened up to him so that he can grow. I love you guys, okay? I'm not going to say anything more because I got to get off. But I love you all. Have a great night and go to those links as well. And I'll comment below and thank you guys even the more for being here. So good night, you all. And thank you, Lamar and Ronnie, for having me on here.